Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Guys, welcome back to our slash I don't work here lady, where Karen seemed to think that everyone is an employee meant to serve them. And in this episode, Karens are at it again, guys, and a few learn the hard way to keep their hands to themselves. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the lineup today. Hit subscribe if you're not subscribed, and as always, don't shake your heads too hard. So this just happened, and I'm still shaking. I got off work a few hours ago, and I visited my grandparents. It's not really relevant to the story, other than I'm not used to the area, and I get easily anxious in unfamiliar settings. I've got super thick hair, and I ended up breaking my hair tie at work, so I figured that I would stop on the way home to fix them up. I ran into a Walgreens on the way home, grabbed the hair ties and a drink, and I went to check out. My uniform's a vibrant blue, where the employees in the store wear baby blue uniforms. That's when an older lady steps in front of me, and she starts asking where something was in the store. I stutter really easily, and I kind of mumbled that I don't work there, and tried to go around her. Well, the woman follows me up to the counter, repeating her question, louder and angrier each time. I don't really like confrontation, so I just put my head down and tried to ignore her. The woman shut up when it was my turn to pay, and I thought that was the end of it. I just grabbed my bag and left. I sat in my car and went to text my mom something when someone knocks on my window. The effing lady followed me outside to my car. I immediately locked the door and shook my head at her. The woman tries to pull on my door handles really hard and she's screaming at me. At this point, I start crying and shaking. I really didn't know what else to do, so I just laid on the horn and yelled at her to get away. She did back away from my car and I took off out of the parking lot. I then stopped and pulled over after like 5 streets to cry and stop shaking. I don't know if I should have done something different, but the look on her face was like she wanted to hurt me. I just wish I could stop shaking. It's not even close to the first time I've been mistaken for an employee. It's not even the first time the person's gotten nasty. But the fact that she followed me out is freaking me out. Yeah guys, that is super creepy, like who follows someone to their car and does that? Like, the lady seems kind of unhinged to me. Either that, or she's super duper entitled, and she chose OP that day to be the one to serve her. And oh boy, if that's the reason, one day, she might do that to the wrong person and face the consequences. Because not everyone reacts to fight or flight situations by taking flight. And this person shares their creepy experience and says, I had some guy follow me out of a doctor's office and open my passenger side door to tell me to stop worrying and smile. And the guy wouldn't shut the door until I smiled at him. They exist, and it's terrifying. So a couple of years back, I was employed as a security officer for my previous college. It helped boost my resume, and it opened up some job opportunities. When I went home to the West Coast for Christmas, a friend of mine offered me a short gig to earn some extra holiday money. He helped run events like concerts, art galleries, etc. He hired me on as security for a week-long convention of some sort. I think it had something to do with financial advertising or something, but that's not important. I had brought my uniform and gear back home with me, knowing this was lined up. So that means a black polo with security in bright white letters on the back. Along with tan cargo pants, boots, duty belts with handcuffs, flashlight, gloves, radios, all that fun stuff. It's kind of hard to mistake me for anything else when I was in uniform, but apparently not hard enough. I got off one particular shift at around 10 o'clock at night. That's when me and a friend decided to hit up the local Walmart to grab some snacks. Mind you, I'm still wearing all of my gear. I was picking out a particularly tasty looking bag of chips, which is sour cream and onion, by the way, when I felt someone tap on my shoulder. I then hear someone say, excuse me, and I turn and see a middle-aged woman, about 5'4", white hair, just standing there. The woman looked extremely nervous, and she was almost shaking. I say to her, uh, can I help you? The woman says, yes, there's a man over in the other aisle, and I'm scared. I think he's on drugs. You have to come do something about it. It's at that moment, I get that familiar, oh crap, feeling in the pit of my gut. Mind you, when someone tells me a person's on drugs, I imagine they're probably tweaking on math or PCP. I know it's not my job to be security here, but I do have training, and I didn't want this lady to be in danger if the guy starts getting violent. I kind of get defensive and slowly move towards the next aisle over and raise an eyebrow. 
The woman nods, still looking utterly petrified. I casually saunter over and peek around the corner, and sure enough, there's a guy standing there, staring blankly at a wall of cookies. I'm kind of wary at this point, but then my first red flag goes up. The guy's not doing anything really odd. He looks like another guy searching for snacks. But then I catch a really strong whiff of weed, probably from a good 15 feet away. The guy glances over at me briefly and his eyes are totally bloodshot. And I realize that the guy's stoned out of his mind. And at that, I kind of laugh to myself and go back to the woman. I say to her, ma'am, I think he's fine. You can rest assured that he'll probably not do anything to harm anyone. He probably has a bad case of the munchies, is all. Immediately, the woman goes from timid and scared to absolutely furious. The woman says to me, look, I don't care what he is. He's on drugs and he needs to be arrested immediately. Now mind you, the state in which the story takes place has legalized weed. So I say to her, ma'am, he's not currently breaking the law. And even if he was, I'm not a police officer. I don't even work here. I'm just trying to be... She interrupts me, saying, that doesn't matter. He's a danger to everyone in here, and you have to apprehend him right now. That's your job. That's when I tell her, I'm sorry, but I won't do that. He's not hurting anyone, and I can't do anything either way. Call the manager if you have an issue. The lady says to me, fine, I will. And I don't know why they employ people like you. You are absolutely useless. And with that, she storms off, presumably to do just that. I finish up my shopping, meet with my buddy, and we go check out. As we're about to leave, I see two cops walking in, and they approach the guy, and they talk to him for a moment. They chat, both the cops shrug, and then turn around to leave. And guess who shows up? Psycho Karen. The woman comes running over to them, and she starts screaming how they're not doing their jobs, and they're letting a dangerous criminal walk away and that she'd have them both fired for being lazy. Eventually, one of them had enough, and they told her that they would arrest her for causing a disturbance if she continued. Eventually, she saw the lights, and she just stamps off, muttering about the moral corruption ruining this country. The woman saw me leaving, and she gave me the nastiest, dirtiest look I could fathom. I just laughed and waved goodbye to the stoner dude on the way out. Oh man, that Poor dude, like all the guy wanted to get was some delicious snacks for the night. And he ends up facing the cops and a crazy Karen. And listen guys, the only thing in danger that evening was the whole pack of cookies that guy was going to destroy. If you know, you know. Before we start, here's a little background about me. I'm a tiny, somewhat older lady, about 5 feet tall and 49 years old. And I look rather unassuming. Most of my adult life, I've worked in probably every aspect of retail, from customer service to now owning a mid-sized retail sporting goods store with a couple of partners. So I do tend to give off that customer service vibe. I usually try to help people if I can, as long as they're polite. Also, I've been training in martial arts for more than 20 years, and I teach on the side as a way to give back to my community. My store is about a block away from a major big box retailer, a Walmart, and I often stop there because we always supply our employees with drinks and snacks to boost morale. On this day, I'm wearing our management shirt, which is black and gray with a logo embroidered on the pocket. The uniform of the store I'm in is a Walmart uniform, which is blue, onto the tail. So I stopped by to pick up some soda and chips for my people. It was early, so there were very few shoppers and not many employees. I'm filling my cart with soda, and I notice a normal, if somewhat pudgy guy who we'll call Kevin, walking up the aisle towards where I've just finished loading cases into my cart. I thought the guy wanted some soda, so I move to the next thing on my list, and I go to the next aisle, and notice that this guy starts following me. I just sigh to myself, as I can see from his stance and eyes that he's not happy. Kevin tromps up to me very aggressively, and he says to me, What the F is your problem? You just walked away from me. I need some help. Now, since I always try to de-escalate aggressive behavior, I put on my sweet voice and said, I'm sorry, did you have a question about my sporting goods store? At that, Kevin says, What? No. Where's the Diet Mountain Dew? And why the F would I want to know anything about your stupid sporting goods store? I say to him, well, maybe because I work there and not here. I have noticed that this store hasn't had Diet Mountain Dew for a while. Maybe you should ask an employee if they're backordered. Kevin screams at me and says, BS, you work here. I see you here every week. 
As he says this, he advances towards me and I step back a few paces. I say to him, Sir, please keep your distance. You're getting very close to me. I don't work here and I will go find you an employee. At this point, two mistakes were made. One by me and one by Kevin. Mistake number one by me is I turned my back on an aggressor who is still agitated. Looking back, the only reason I can give is I really wanted to get back to what I was doing so I could get to my store. And honestly, I didn't consider him a physical threat. Mistake number two, which was made by Kevin. Kevin puts his hands on me as he grabbed my shoulder, in an attempt to turn me around, I suppose. So at this point, 20 years of martial arts training kicked in, and Kevin ends up face down on the ground in a hammerlock, with my knee shoved right into his back. Then, using my best martial arts instructor voice, I yell, Attention, any employee, please call 911 for the police. I've been assaulted. After a moment of shock, Kevin starts squealing. And not yelling, not crying, or cussing. The guy's making squealing noises while struggling. Suddenly, when there was no employees a few seconds ago, there was now at least six swarming us, including the manager. And since I had no idea what Kevin would do, I refused to release my hold on him until the police arrived. The local police department shows up, and I recognize an officer as a regular customer in my store. The guy looks at me and looks at Kevin squealing on the ground, and I can see the amusement in his eyes. I then let go of the man, and that's when his tirade starts, of course. Kevin screams to the officer, Oh my god, officers. This is a hate crime. Arrest her. She threw me to the ground because I'm gay. I only wanted to get some Diet Mountain Dew. She's the devil. The officer looks at him, and the guy's standing about 6 feet, 180 pounds, and then at me, a 5 foot tall, 97 pound woman, and he raises his eyebrows. So the aftermath of the whole thing was this. We were both briefly detained, and the officers reviewed the tapes, and asked if I wanted to press charges in front of Kevin, which I declined to do. Kevin then starts whining, saying, it's not fair, she used hate speech against me. The officer I know asked, what did she say, sir? And of course, Kevin flips his lid and starts accusing the officer of being homophobic. Now, I wish I could say it ended there. Unfortunately, Kevin finally figured out where I do work. And the guy wrote reviews, accusing all of us employees of being hateful people. The guy began to call incessantly, and he made some threats that escalated him coming to my store, causing property damage, and being arrested. And this time, I did press charges, and I sued for libel and defamation. The officer signed up his daughter at my dojo. Yeah, definitely not the brightest person, guys, especially after going to OP's work and ending up arrested after she declined to press charges the first time. Like, I'll never understand why people feel the need to get violent when people don't assist them. Like, even if OP was an employee and didn't help, go find another employee who can help, right? But hopefully the guy does learn a lesson from this, and I love how the officer signed his daughter up after seeing OP lay the smackdown on a guy that's twice her size. So a little while back, I'm in a store similar to Walmart. I'm a slightly bigger guy, so it's pretty normal for someone to somehow verbally cue me that I'm blocking them, so I get out of their way. My dress is pretty normal. I usually have black slacks, white shirts, and sometimes I'll sport a black jacket over my shirt, depending on the temperatures or whatever. During the incident, I was wearing my black jacket. Anyways, I'm in the pharmacy area, going over different multivitamins and dailies, when I feel a hand on my shoulder. Now, I really don't have a high tolerance for anyone, so I step aside, away from the hand, and use the back of my hand to brush it off. I then square up and face my whole body towards a wide mouth gaping Karen who has her hair in a kind of 1970s hair curl deal. The woman's no older than 50. I say to her, uh, you shouldn't put hands on people you don't know. Karen says, wow, you're an a-hole. I say to her, listen lady, you came to me. I then turned around to leave her when she grabs my arm to stop me. It happened kind of quick, so I grabbed her wrist, screamed at her to stop touching me, and slammed her hand into the shelf, knocking down products on the floor. The woman starts to wail, and I just walked away shaking my head. I end up grabbing a damn Reese's Pieces king size bar that they have with the four sticks. I'm out here stress eating due to the situation. So I paid for it, put the sticks in my pockets, when all of a sudden I hear, he's the effing a-hole employee right there, nearly broke my arm. And I'm thinking, ugh, here we go. 
I deadpan over, assuming she was with some cop or manager, when her husband starts approaching me. The guy wasn't professionally dressed, he was wearing a wife beater of all things, and the guy was tunnel visioned on me. The guy screams at me, you hit my wife? And I'm thinking, I'm not gonna entertain that thought with a response. The guy just continued with a barrage of insulting words at me. And people as usual keep their distance and watch because that's what crowds do. The guy's face shifted a bit. He's a fat kind of big guy. And I say that because I think he usually intimidates people when he bulldogs towards them. Anyways, after shaking my head and trying to calm him down, the guy chooses to try to slap me. Which kind of did shock me. I haven't had anyone try to slap me in a long time. I'm not sure if I said, really, in response, or just strongly thought it. Anyway, I dodged, railed his knee with a swift kick, and down he goes. The guy starts screaming, and I made eye contact with the manager, who's just staring. I looked, she looked back, glanced over at Karen, who's now crying, screaming, He has bad knees, why would you kick his leg? I then just walked out and left the area, I didn't bother to stay, and I haven't returned back to the store. Talk about a plan backfiring on a guy. And hopefully, now that guy will think twice about approaching random people looking for a fight. And I love how Karen was like, why would you kick his leg? He's got bad knees. Well, maybe your husband shouldn't try slapping random people, Karen. I'd say that was very much fair game. And with Opie just leaving like that, you don't have to stay and wait for cops, right? Especially when you've acted in self-defense. My dad was recently in the hospital for about 8 weeks for a brain infection. He's back home now and he's doing very well. I don't live nearby, but I came to visit almost every day. So the way the hospital set up is there's a roundabout in front of the main entrance with a valet service. And there's a parking garage for patients and visitors across the road from the main entrance. I'm terrible with distances, but I'd say it's maybe 30 meters from the garage to the hospital entrance. So one day, I'm visiting, and as I'm driving to the garage, I notice an older gentleman leaning against a pillar. It looks as though he's waiting for someone before crossing the rows of cars. I park, and then as I'm exiting the garage, I see the same old man outside, now leaning on half a wall with his hands on his knees. I ask him if he needs any help, and he tells me he's visiting his brother. But it's so hot, and he doesn't think he could make it across the street to the entrance. I told him that I'll be right back with a wheelchair and help. So I run inside the hospital to the main entrance and ask the security guards at the front desk where the visitor sign-in is, and if they have any volunteers and a wheelchair who can help the guy. They basically said no, and it's gonna be a while before they can find someone. Now obviously, I can't let this guy sit in 110 degree heat, so I look around the lobby and lo and behold, there's a wheelchair available. So I grab it and head back to the old man. I get him settled in the chair and we head to the hospital. We get our visitor's badges and they tell him where to go to see his brother. But the guy's literally on the other side of the hospital. This poor guy, who I found out's pushing 90, barely made it 10 feet in the parking garage before needing a break. So I asked security, okay, I'm not heading that way, so can someone push him there? Again, they say no, they can't leave the front desk and there's no volunteers on staff right now. I ask, what about the hospital transport team? Nope, that's just for patients. And I'm like, wow, this is some BS, but I have a little time, so I'll just get him to his brother's room and then the nurses will hopefully find someone to help the man back to the parking garage. At this point, I haven't been outside the ICU and I don't know the hospital very well, so they gave me a map and off we go. And I kid you not, it took us 5 minutes to walk there and this poor dude would have never made it on his own. We end up having a very lovely chat, and I mentioned that I went to college in Lancaster. And when we got to his brother's room, a very nice nurse thanked me and took over. I felt super good about myself, I'm not gonna lie, it always feels nice to do a good deed. About a week later, I'm coming out of the garage and now there's a different old man. This time with an oxygen tank, sitting in the same spot as the first old guy. And I think to myself, here we go again. It's pretty much the same deal. The guy's much younger, in his 60s, but he has heart and breathing issues, and he can't make it across the way in the heat. This time, I know where the extra wheelchairs are kept, so I go to the lobby, grab one, pick up the dude, and we head back inside to check in. The guy kept asking me questions about being a candy striper. And I told him I don't work for the hospital, but I didn't mind helping him. 
Mind you, I'm wearing like workout shorts and a tank top, so I definitely don't look like a candy striper or someone that works in the hospital. He then complained about my wheelchair choice because it didn't have footrest. It turns out, the guy's at the wrong building, and he basically needs to go around the block to another clinic on campus. Now, luckily he was there to check in as a patient, so the transport team could come help this time. Because this man was much more abrasive. Also, could have gone without the multiple, you're prettier than any candy stripers I've ever seen comments, but whatever. I told him I'm gonna leave now, and good luck, because this time, I'm in a rush to meet with my dad's doctors. As I'm slowly backing away, he just kept blabbering. How young people have gone to crap, because no one would help him until I came along. How I'm such a good candy striper, and the younger generation is doomed, blah blah blah. Anyways, I eventually loudly interrupted and said, Okay sir, the transport team's gonna be here shortly, so you can wait here with security. Good luck. So far, I haven't come across anyone else who needs my wheelchair valet services, but I think it's safe to say that it's time for that hospital to hire some actual volunteers. Obi sounds like such an amazing human being, and what a wholesome story that was, guys. And that man was right, not a lot of people would stop and take the time to help someone in need nowadays. So for Obi to take the time to go into the hospital, grab a wheelchair, and help someone like that is incredible. So this happened yesterday, and I'm still baffled by the interaction. I'm female, and I have short hair, which is why I guess this interaction happened. I had just gotten off work from my thrift store job. I had changed and I was wearing a short skirt and a tank top, nothing like the store's employees. But that doesn't stop Karen from thinking otherwise. So I go to the grocery store by my place, and I'm in the candy aisle because I want some candy. After dealing with rude customers and a long day. And then, there's a lady who probably is around 40 looking lost. The lady comes up to me and says, Do you know where the fabric softener is? I reply, I apologize, I don't, since I don't use fabric softener. The lady then says, who doesn't use fabric softener? And why won't you try to help me? I just need... I then interrupt her and say, I don't work here, miss. I'm not in... And that's when the woman interrupts me, and she goes on a tirade and says, You think that you're too good to help me since you're a lesbian? You people think that since you got the right to marry, you can rule the world. Hearing her say that, I'm absolutely in shock and disgusted by her attitude. I say to her, one, lady, I'm not a lesbian. And if I certainly was one, I would not choose you. And two, I'm just trying to get some candy. The woman basically ignores me and says, you people need God. That's when I point to my cross pendant and I say, I go to mass every chance I get. Now I don't work here. Have a nice day. I just walked off and the woman didn't say a peep anymore. Again, what a weird interaction. Yeah, I would definitely say that was a weird interaction. And I seriously hope she doesn't think that about every girl with short hair. Surely she's smarter than that. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash I don't work here, lady. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's stories. If you did, hit that thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss these crazy stories. And if you missed the last episode on the channel, it's on our slash entitled People episode where Karens are going absolutely crazy yet again with their demands. Guys, go check it out if you haven't, and myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.